The Marlins split the series with the Rays, but we, now the dust has settled, we are reflecting on the new look Marlin, Marlins and what the future looks like for some of the guys. We've got a first look of Kyle Stowers. Not the day he was looking for, but it's only one day. No, no need to overreact at this point. Tons to get into day after deadline day. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins, your daily Marlins pod. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up, of course, at Miami Marlins underscore UK for listening to the pod. Firstly, happy Wednesday, guys. Happy end of the month. 31st of July. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen, guys. This is your team every day. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm a reminder there as well, there is a YouTube channel. Hit subscribe over on the YouTube channel and join me in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what your favorite deal is. I think that's the question of the day. Give me your favorite deadline deal. Your favorite prospect now in the Marlins system. Let me know. This is it. We're in that forming piece now where we start to attach ourselves emotionally to new prospects. Jazz Chisholm Jr. was my guy. I need to find a new guy, which is going to be my new prospect. Tons to get into today. Delighted to welcome onto the show to give his sense of all of the action over the past few days. It's been a busy few. Chase, the Loud Marlins fan in the house. Chase, how are we doing, brother? We're here. It's a great day. We got a We're victory. Here. You know, <laughs> they got to stop winning if we want that draft pick, but <laughs> we're all good. Good to be here. Thank yeah. you for having me. For sure, mate. Yeah, the Marlins, they're playing too well. They, I mean, they, it's all-star break. They've been they've been on fire, actually. So, uh, yeah, fair play to the Marlins. A very tough day for them yesterday. Effectively, Skip Schumacher trying to piece together any kind of roster. But today, they get the win. Uh, and uh, led by, I think, Jonah Bride, a big part of that. Uh, Jake Berger as well, really stepping up. So, tons to get into here, mate. This uh, episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Chase has been a busy few days. A lot of a lot of fan favorites have exited the building. One or two still remain, but man, oh man, it was a extremely busy deadline from Peter Bendix. Um, he executed what was it six deals specifically on deadline day. A couple more in advance of that. It's been a very busy period for him. All different types of profiles of, of players, all different types of ages. Just your assessment, really, of Peter Bendix's work at this deadline. Peter Bendix bended it like Bendix. He cooked. <laughs> he he made a whole soup out of spare chicken parts. Uh, mm. I don't know, man. In one part, I speak for. I don't speak for the fan base. I speak for myself as a huge Marlins fan, as you know, mm. I'm excited for the future. Okay. I'm saddened by the present. And yeah. if you were to say after Saturday's move with jazz, uh, you were a little excited with Davidson, Davison, De Los Santos coming in, mm. uh, jazz going out, you know, you hear about the catcher. I'm on the border of, do I want to remain a season ticket member? Do I not? But okay. after yesterday, I'm all in on being a season <laughs> ticket holder moving forward. I love Jazz. Let's go. You and I have spoken about this man for three years. We've built a mm. relationship with him I, I, in person. When a player knows your name, not LMF, but your actual name, mm. when you meet him, you know you mean something to them. They meant mm. something to me. Um, it's tough, yeah. but we got Connor Norby from the Baltimore Orioles for Trevor Rogers. That trade alone no. is an A plus. We'll talk mm -hmm. about Stowers in a second. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And okay. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> well, what's, I, I'm, I, I get it right. You were, you were teetering on the edge. The deadline day specifically has then brought you back. You now the hope has been renewed. Maybe is that where you're at? Like all of a sudden, you is it because the profile of guys 
has shifted a touch. You've got a little bit more kind of big league ready, guys. Is that what's shift, shifted for you in the last day or two, or is it something different to that? It's you. You kind of saw a pattern before this deadline. Of mm. They were going young, really young. Uh, Kim yeah. Ng did a great job, it seems, last year's draft with uh, Noble Meyer and mm -hmm. uh, White. Uh, I forget his first name. Tim, Tim, yeah. Tim Thomas Tim White. T Thomas White. Sorry. Um, she did a great job with those pitchers. We've always been great at developing pitchers, but you have had no one from a hitting standpoint in that farm coming up. And you could say the Griffin Conines. We'll see the Troy Johnstons. The uh, Kemp a a Ackerman, I, I believe it is. Um, you, you, you see it, but they're not big prospects. They're not going to infuse winning into your team. They'll get a help home run here and there if they come up. But you see what he did yesterday, and that's get guys who will be here for the next five years, four years until they train them away if you want to be a pessimist. But yeah. at least four years of service time you'll get from them. And then you get the new influx of the younger guys who they may have gotten in in, in uh, P, P, PJ and uh, the second pick. Uh, I forget his name, but um, it's just exciting that we have something to look forward to next year. We have we have a whole new plethora of guys to talk mm. about and really develop in front of us. Yeah. We definitely do. There's going to be a lot of names that we're going to be tracking. I feel like uh, I, you can already see it in terms of the coverage, the main people that, that follow the Marlins on Twitter. That's, you know, my source that I go to. And it's fair to say it's obvious. It's been obvious, I'd say, for some time that you're tracking closely prospects now, more so than the big league club. Like the content yeah. now is all about, oh, De Los Santos, couple of home runs out the gate. You're tracking him very closely. And so that's going to be the little shift in optics here, I guess. Um, you know, for, for Marlins fans, I guess. Interestingly today, Peter Bendix met the media. I think it was Christina Di Nicola that maybe asked the question. It may have been Jess Blaylock. I'm not 100% certain. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see who was doing it. I was trying to work out the voice. But either way, the question was basically, uh, what's this team going to look like in 25? Are they going to be competitive, I think, was basically the question. It's fair to say Peter Bendix skirted around that one very quickly and moved on. Yep. That was, I think, a real interesting piece for him in that, you know, he's not looking to put a number on anything. You know, he's going to frame it like, I'm going to, we'll see what 25 brings. But I think it's very interesting that he didn't give any kind of direct answer about, oh, we're going to be better in 25. And actually we're going to be in, you know, you know, whatever it might be. It was almost no comment and let's move on, which I think is interesting. Are you seeing it the same with 25? I mean, my sense is that 25 is going to be, the Marlins are picking a high a high pick again. Um, it's going to be that kind of season. Are you seeing the same or are you seeing some, something different now based on these moves? I think it's a wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, he was very clear that let's finish this season. Let's not discuss next season yet uh, and discuss. I think that's how he kind of blew her off in that. Yeah. Um, I would like a little bit more openness with him. It's it's unique how he directs questions or misdirects questions and whatnot, you know? Um, yeah, it's tough, right? You got me silent, right? Because I want to say stuff, but I don't want to offend him if he watches the show. I'm a little angry <laughs> Excited. Oh, he watches it, like, mate. Don't don't you worry. As, he watches the show. I can tell you that. I can tell you that for certain. <laughs> as a member, as a Marlins member, mm -hmm. a paying fan, yeah, I want to know the direction of the team before yeah. I give them my money. Yeah, he yeah, that's fair. That I think that's fair. He knows that if he tells us the direction of the team for twenty twenty five, he yeah. may not get the renewal. So he's skirting yeah. around these questions. I yeah. see us competitive. I see us winning 60. I see us back to 2021-22 Marlins where you know, you'll probably add some veterans who are not that good mixed with a lot of young talent um, yeah. and get 65 to 69, 70 wins. Mm -hmm. Does that put us in a top 10 pick? Probably. Yeah, um, but, probably. 
the way baseball is right now, you never know it, it, with that third wild card spot where you'll be. Yeah, I guess so. And, I, you know, the, the funny thing is, and it's easy to be down on the club this year because, you know, the way it's gone, the way it started, really, it isn't about what it's been. It's the way it started, to be honest. So it's easy to get down on the club. But then you go back to the year before and you then actually go and eyeball that roster. I think this is a really interesting exercise to do. Go and have a look at the 23 roster that was there opening day. Look at that. And, and you then think, man, oh, man, like that team, that offense as a, as a collective, as a group, wasn't good. Wasn't good. But yeah. they pitched well. Starters were okay. But the bullpen was elite. And that's the funny thing, to your point, it's baseball, right, where who knows in 25? Like, they're not going to be a top 15 offense. There's no chance they're a top 15 offense, the Marlins in 25, but they may pitch well, like the Mariners have done this year, where you've got a top one staff and a bottom two offense, and that creates an over 500 club. And then you're in the mix. That's the interesting part here for the Marlins in 25 is if they pitch well, they're always going to be in games. And that's the, that's the unknown at this point, right? With the influx of players that they got, in these pro potential in these prospects i'm not saying they're the the o'neills like the pirates right where they have all these unique top first round picks coming in but you can be like a pirates be backed by your pitching and have a growing team that's in their youth you, you don't you're not the reds where you have an eli de la cruz coming up uh, but you know you have a nice mix with pitching you, you brought up the Mariners. That's where I see us in the next year going into 2026. It's just yeah. there's a big question here, and that's which pitchers are going to be here to there even be able to talk about this in 25. Yeah. You, you you know Yuri's going to be here eventually, mm -hmm. but let's say he's I think not they there. manipulate it. I personally right. think they manipulate Yuri in 25. I don't think we see him much of Yuri at all in 25. I think. He's going to be late anyway. They're going to be slow, and we're going to see a Max Meyer situation with Yuri Perez at 25. Is my gut feel. Yeah, you, you'll you'll have Max, some of Yuri. You'll have Brax, maybe. Mm -hmm. But Lazardo and San I'm still off on Sandy ever pitching again for the Marlins. Mm -hmm. uh, hold me to that bookmark it. It just doesn't make sense. And you, what you just saw, they got rid of anybody who has a million dollar contract. Right? Yeah. Everyone's yeah. back to minimums. Yeah. Are you going to pay this guy $17.2 million when, yes, are you trading him really with low value? Not really. He's Sandy mm -hmm. Alcantara. You know he's getting healthy. He'll give you 200 plus innings. He's already yeah. in rehab. We may see mm -hmm. him pitch a game or two in September. Yep. If, if we see him in September, he's definitely going to be traded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, I, yeah. but again, back I to your question, so. with the influx of talent, we can finish around 70 wins. Yeah. The question is, and we it's not to answer now because we've got to hit the first ads, but the, the question is, is to what degree of talent has there been an influx of? And that's the unknown. At the moment, we've got projections rather than on-field knowledge, big league on-field knowledge. So at the moment, we're just projecting. And that's the point of these prospects and these farms. We need to see it. And the first glimpse we've had of the one of those guys, the first guy, Kyle Stowers, up to the big league for the Marlins anyway, today, debut. Not the debut he was looking for. I'm not going to pile in on him, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, before we do that, let's firstly let you know about our good friends. And it's a brand new friends as well. We love new friends here on, Li on Locked on Marlins. is Liquid IV. Yes, sir. And when you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's Popsicle firecracker flavor a surefire summer hit you can get hydrated with electrolytes essential vitamins and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in america because baseball and summer go together like liquid iv and indulgent hydration yes sir they are all about the flavors as well guys they have got tons of flavors and you can blast off with the iconic summer flavor of popsicle firecracker a festive blend of citrus-fueled lemon, lime, tar cherry, and raspberry flavors. You can find all your favorite flavors on their website, 
uh, and uh, including my personal favorite, by the way, Pina Colada. Yes, sir. let's get the Pina Coladas in. Uh, <laughs> the non-alcoholic versions, I guess. But no more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. And this episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at Supply House. Yes, sir. And guys, you can get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to get you the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? No problem. Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business. Talk to a real person every time. Pros, listen up. Pros in the skilled trades get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every single order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Welcome back to Locker Marlins, guys, with me, Peter Pratt, and Chase, the Loud Marlins fan. We are reflecting on an active deadline, looking ahead. We've been looking ahead to what 2025 could look like for the Marlins. I want to go back to today's game, the Marlins win, but the main piece in there, Kyle Stowers making his Marlins debut. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 0 for 4 day, 4 Ks. Uh, the sombrero for Stowers, not what he was looking for to get it going. Um, nevertheless, taking that away, I like you. Um, I'm just, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I'm I'm intrigued to see a new young guy. And okay, it didn't. It wasn't his day today. It wasn't his day. But I must say, my main my main takeaway from him is there is definitely some Jock Peterson looks about him. So I'm all in on that. Jock Peterson, one of my favorite players generally, mainly for his love of red wine. So I think there's, you know, he's going to be a fun guy to follow. He has got an aggressive swing, was my first reaction. Very aggressive. There's power in there. But a bit like Jesus Sanchez a few years back, it's about making contact. And I think when he makes contact, this ball is going to disappear. Um, what are you What are you seeing in Stowers' profile? I'm taking away today's game, I'm, I'm just kind of joking really about the, the sombrero. It's not the start he wanted, but generally with his, his profile, his makeup, how do you see the fit here with the Marlins? It's going to be a good fit. He... He has Marlins written all over him. He was kind of blocked in that system yeah. coming he was up. Blocked. You're right. Yeah. It, and I hate to make this comparison. I don't want to put any pressure on this kid. Mm. Um, but he's the next Brian De La Cruz. Um, yeah. If you if you think about DLC, I don't think any Marlins fan heard his name before that trade for Amy Garcia. No. In Houston. Only only uh, Aram Layden. He was the only person that ever knew about that Brian De La Cruz. And he nailed that trade saying, I think it's Brian De La Cruz for Yimmy Garcia. Unbelievable projection from Aram Layden, the GOAT. But I'm with you. I'd never heard of Brian De La Cruz uh, before that. And so, you know. Great job by Aram. He's great at what he does. He um, if you saw that trade, DLC struggled. He didn't get a hit until his fourth game, if I remember correctly. I remember no. tweeting, cruise control, hashtag cruise control. Yeah. Um, and this kid, this kid reminds me of that where mm. you want him to do well, and I do. And this is the guy I'm gonna build a relationship with. Mm. He he went 0 for, he didn't look comfortable, he was just traded. These young kids could be a little affected by that, probably mm. unexpectedly traded. Uh, yep. but he's done all right. He has four home runs in uh a hundred and 61 games or, or sorry 161 at bats in the majors so far he has four mm -hmm. home runs he bats 267 uh you'll from i have friends who i've met on twitter who are diehard Oriole fans and here's what they told me their exact quote was give this guy every day at bats once he gets in comfortable you're going to see him hit 25 to 30 home runs 
Yep. So that's what I expect out of him. That's my scouting report that I'm hearing. So I'm going to jump yep. on it and he'll be fine. And he's, he may not even be a starter, right? Or he may be a fourth. You know how I've been down on Jesus Sanchez for a, not down, but realistic mm-hmm, about him. Yep. If they're platooning, when, when Dane Myers comes back, we'll be fine there. Outfield is not a worry to me. I think outfield, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, he's going to be given every every opportunity, right? I think as soon as Stowers was acquired in that Trevor Rogers deal, I already had the sense that the Brian De La Cruz could be moved heading into deadline day. There was some rumors circling. That's why there was interest in De La Cruz. And as soon as there is, there's interest in a seller's market, it's time to sell. And that's what they did. But yeah. as soon as Stowers was acquired, though, you know, oh, there we go. We got the Della Clutch T-shirt in here as well. Makes um, me for those watching. Makes me yeah. so sad that DLC's gone. I don't... Yeah, he was a fun guy, right? He, you know, th- this is it. You, you lose the personalities as well, and you know, Della Cruz, you know, fan favorite. I mean, Jesus Sanchez. I know we'll miss him a lot as well. Those two, the Batch brothers. So, you know, it's yep. you know, it's just the unfortunate part of the game. And I think the way it played out for him, you know, he's on, he's in the outfield shagging, you know you know, shagging balls or whatever. And next thing is Skip Schumacher's got to walk out as soon as Skip's walking towards and they're like, oh no, everyone's going, no, no. And, you know, he has to give him the hug and the handshake. And, you know, he was, you know, moved late. Um, But as soon as Stowers was in, I knew De La Cruz was in, you know, serious chance of being traded yesterday. If you, It's really, I knew the night before everyone was gone. If you saw my tweet, I, I heard it. I knew DLC was going to go. I called who was going to be left. Give me a little credit here, Pete. Pat my yeah. shoulder. I had this a little it. bit of insight Sources, here. Baby. Right? Um, it just made me sad. I'm happy he went to the Pirates. I mm. don't... You and I discussed before that why would they move him? He has value, yes. But he had three years of control left. For almost, I think maybe three and a half. That's yep. upsetting that we lost him. Because we're going to miss that bat. For everything you were saying, people were saying about Jorge Sol- Soler the year before leaving... I mean, De La Cruz was a young version of him. Uh, Craig Mish said he has his ceiling is Tiesca Hernandez. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to miss DLC and his oomph that he brought. But yeah. oh. we got Berger. He's still here. I'm that's surprised. I knew he would still be here, but it's surprising that no one was after him. There, yeah. he has this bat that's getting hot. Could have definitely helped the team make the playoffs. I'm excited about Berger still being here. Me too. Um, Jesus Sanchez, he has a spot now. He's not going to platoon. He'll get his opportunities. You got these new guys. So I'm excited. Connor Norby is a Marlin. Mic drop. Yeah, everyone seems to be happy about that one. I think, you know, just on him specifically, again, Peter Bendix with the media, uh, the decision made, Stowers up, but Norby down to AAA. And the reason, the rationale, some people found that surprising that, you know, considering obviously the, the lack of, Talent at this point on the on the big league roster, that Norby heads down to AAA, and the reason being the reason cited anyway is that we're going to go and have a look at his defense and mm-hmm. maybe have a look at him at third base potentially. So it's been predominantly at second base, but we're going to have a look at him at third. Is this just an excuse? Like, uh, where's your you know, Bendix has got to say what he's going to say. What you know, is it is it a legitimate reason? If you look at who we have up. Right, you have Bruhan who could play short and second. Yeah, you tried him out at third. He really was not good at third. Let's be realistic here. You 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 have Xavier Edwards who they're trying to get to be a shortstop, and he may be the shortstop of the future. We we don't know yet, but he, he's yeah. he's more his his skill set is more for a second baseman at at this point. Although he's made some sick plays, I don't want to take that away from him, but. Mm-hmm. We, if, if Berger's going to be your first baseman, we can't move forward with uh, Emmanuel Rivera at third base. Yes, he had a home run yesterday, but his offense is not good. And Agreed. he might be a good defender, but we need you need offense at your corners to be a good team. Connor Norby has that offense. You see Jazz, who had never played third base before, mm-hmm. ever, and he's he looked great yesterday i didn't get to watch him today but i bet he looked just as good at third he's athletic if we this guy could be a third baseman you saw they tried gene segura at third base last year so yeah give this don't put too much pressure at the bigs yet see what he could do for you down there 
And yep. you know what? If that's really the truth, go for it. They've got – this season's done. They got warm bodies up able to play for us right now and weird names that I've never heard of. There's mm-hmm. a forest. There, um, <laughs> What's that? Forest Wall. They, they yep. got another guy who's in the lineup. It's, it's just – he said it today. We have a lot of talent who are going to try to earn jobs, basically. I forget his exact terms, but a yeah. lot of guys who are going to get opportunities. That's all this yeah. season's about now. You would like to see some of our own minor leaguers come up, um, but I'm really excited for Connor. I have yeah. I had him coming to us, not for Rogers. I had him in the Tanner Scott deal I put in my head for, for, mm-hmm. for whatever. It was either him or... Uh, there, there was another guy down there, um, but he, he's not up yet. But um, in, in the Orioles. But I'm happy we got Connor Norby. I had purchased mm-hmm. his autograph cards, so they're r- ripe and ready to be in my card order. And uh, I'm happy to have them. That's probably the most go. exciting. And they got it for Trevor Rogers. Like, how bad is Trevor, Ro- Trevor Rogers going to do for the Orioles? I, I feel horrible for him and all this pressure that just got put on him. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I love Trevor as a person. I love that. I love his twenty one campaign. He was unreal. For it's just it hasn't been. It, it ha- yeah, it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been the same for for a few seasons with Trevor Rogers. Right. Although he's gone into just before the deadline, he got into a little bit of a groove. But you know, yeah, the general consensus here, the Marlins did well on that deal. I think it's fair to say. Um, I want to ask you specifically. I'm going to hit the ad and then I'm going to come back and ask you just to finish up here your sense of the because for me this deadline. De- I mean, actually by the uh, general media assessing all of the deals in in totality. The number one prospect overall moved was to the Marlins, and that was part of the Jazz Chisholm Jr. deal, the catcher, um, Augustin Ramirez. So we're going to talk about him. I want to get your take on him specifically. Uh, But before we do that, let's let you know about our good friends over at Game Time. Yes, sir, and Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on Game Time they actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, game time, it takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. If you're headed to Atlanta for this weekend, four-game series, by the way, get yourself on the game time. See what's cooking there. It's going to be a packed house, no doubt about it. Jorge Soler, back to the Bravos, by the way. So that is going to be a stunner. Um, guys, the thing about game time for me, I am, I am a stickler. But when you find something you want to buy, you get to check out, you go to pay, and then the prices go up. You've got these surprise fees at checkout. I hate that. It's such a turnoff. With Game Time, they've got all in pricing. You can toggle the feature that shows the total upfront, no surprise fees. And also, you get that panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy in their lowest price guarantee. They will credit you 110% of the difference if you find the same seat in the same row for less. Can't say fairer than that. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets for game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on MLB for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem the code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, guys, final segment here with me, Peter Pratt, and Chase, the Loud Marlins fan. And I wanted to finish up here just getting your sense about the, the top prospect by rankings, let's say, opinion, whatever it might be. But the top prospect moved at this deadline was Augustin Ramirez, the catcher, the power-hitting catcher in return for Jazz Chisholm Jr. It sounds like that was the prospect that got it over the line for the Yankees. The Marlins coveted him, and that was the swing prospect Few people were in on Jazz, but the Yankees get it done. We've seen the impact Jazz has had. They haven't lost a game since Jazz has been on that roster, and he has been absolutely impactful. But from a Marlins perspective, what do you make of this this profile? It looks enticing, but I don't think it's without floor at this point. What about you? Where are you taking this one? It's exactly how you just described it. It's enticing, (laughs) but not without a flaw. Mm-hmm. from again i don't know much about prospects i rely on the fish on farm team and alex does a great job um on that team of uh, fish yeah. on the miners fish on the farm i'm sorry um he he does a great job and he he thinks this guy's defense is a little lagging it's not something you can't learn um 
I don't want to go back to the Alfaro days where you can't block. I mean, Fortez yeah. is great at blocking, but he can't hit c consistently. So yeah. are you going the total polar opposite, a guy who can hit but can't really catch? Um, throwing The throwing out at second or the runners, the base runners, you can't have that either. You can't have a Jacob Stallings again. So um, I'm hoping that it, they, they – they are confident, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt in confidence that mm -hmm. they're able to help these young players develop. Um, yeah. You see the catchers, specifically the catchers, and the difference in Joe Mack. You see it in Paul McIntosh. You see it yeah. in Will Banfield, specifically the catchers. They're doing something different this year than they didn't do before. And if it's three players, that means it's a system thing. So I'm hoping whatever – uh, Peter Bendix did in the off season to for development and analytics that helps these kids develop. That it helps uh, Augustin Ramirez. And in a year from now, we're talking about how he has 15 home runs and 30 plus games, and we're very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the names you've just mentioned there, I think you know it. It it does bring back some very interesting memories because if I think back to Jorge Alfaro, who power hitting catcher that can't really catch that well. And he was given every opportunity with the Marlins, but it just, it, it wasn't consistent enough. And the defense wasn't there in the big spots. Hence, we even got to the postseason that year and Chad Wallach ends up taking his spot. Right. I think it's very interesting. I look at the Rays right now, the Rays big league club. And again, Peter Bendix is effectively, you know, what do the Rays do? I'm going to do the same. That's the model. That's the way they operate. The Rays model is, Offensive production from the catching spot doesn't matter. They actually, they don't care. You've got to be a stud catcher. I think it's very, very interesting that they've taken this type of profile, which frankly, and we don't, you know, we've seen Georgie Alfaro. We've seen what he was. We, dream, we dreamt on him for many years. But really, like, this is a very similar profile, in my opinion, to Georgie Alfaro. Very similar. And there's a lot of helium around this guy this year. He's having a good year. He's yeah. having a good year. He was nowhere near anyone's prospect list going into the year. All of a sudden, he's had a good year. You know, helium guy. There's a huge amount of risk in this guy and his profile, in my opinion. Looks fun, but there's a defensive flaw there. And for a catcher, I think that's a big problem. Big problem. And we've seen it before. Because then the Marlins, what did they do? Alfaro, we've had enough. We're going to go and get Jacob Stallings, the best catcher in the game. That didn't really work out either. So, man, oh, man, it's going to be very interesting. I, I mentioned this on Twitter earlier. I'm just going to repeat it here on, on the show because I think it's really, you know, it's important to throw this in there. Peter Bendix's moves are going to be every single move and every single player he acquires when it's part of a big deal, Arias, Jazz, whatever, and Trevor Rogers, all these guys. These guys are going to be significantly under the microscope. Everyone's going to be watching very, very closely. Because right now, Peter Bendix for the Marlins, he's done nothing apart from blow it up. And yes, he's been in the Rays as a GM. Fine. But right now, Peter Bendix, you're dreaming on him delivering the Rays. But at the moment, he's done nothing for the Marlins of value apart from the big league club going backwards and some minor league enhancements. The few Marlins fans, me included, you've got to earn the trust. You got to earn the trust. You got to deliver it, and so I'm watching very closely at these guys, very, very closely. I know it's a multi-year thing, and that's the situation. But I went and looked at the 2019 farm rankings, where the Marlins had ascended in the farm system. They were number four ranked system, and I'm not a prospect guy either, like you, Chase. So it's not my bag. I don't have the time to follow it. But more often than not, the prospects flame, and I think that's the thing: is let's not waste our time following everything. I, I, I buy with my eyes, mate. I see them and I'm like, okay, is this guy any, any good? First impressions for Carl Stowers, I'm a little bit concerned, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, you, get, you, get, you get your first impressions of De Los Santos, who has two monster home runs, mammoth exactly. home runs for Jacksonville. Exactly. You're all excited. Well, but, this is, I mean, this is it, right? But there's the thing that I think is very, very obvious and has become even more acute in the last couple of years is the variance from AAA double A to the big leagues, particularly in July and August is so vast. And, you know, the MLB has got a pitching 
epidemic at the moment, pandemic, whatever you want to phrase it, with injuries. There's so many pitchers that have gone down. And you have to consider, like, what quality of pitcher still is in AAA at this point? And it's okay to be blowing this up, but the step up is ginormous from AAA to the big league level. And so, frankly, all of them numbers, in my opinion, are irrelevant, really. Okay, you, you know, you got you to gotta do what you got to do, but the acid test is the big league level. That's the point. You can talk about, you know, this guy, you know, Ramirez, Augustin Ramirez, he's, he's blowing up double A pitching. I don't care, frankly. You know, proofs in the pudding at the big league level. And frankly, this Marlins club should be judged on the big league roster, not the farm system rankings. So, you know, I'm not a rebuild guy. I've already been through one. There's You've been through many more than me. And, you know, this must feel like a broken record, though, in some ways, mate. So I appreciate your stamina. I, I'm impressed by your stamina to deal with it's, this. And feels like you've been energized by this, uh, you know, the last few days, at least. I'm trying, Pete. Deep down, I'm broken hearted. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. Um, yeah, yeah, every, yeah like, sure. it's, in, the, in this game, the social media game, this fandom trying to be somebody game, it's all mm -hmm. about relationships. And I just lost all mine. So, <laughs> got to start like, fresh, right? Start fresh, baby. You know, get you know, get get in the in the Carl Stowers and let him know you're there. Get him a bottle it's of wine. To get I think louder right away. Let's this get louder it. right away. When you see Stowers and you ask him, you know, one of the first questions I want to ask is, "Do you like red wine?" Please ask him that. Let me know his thoughts because I'm I, I need to know is he is it Jock Peterson 2.0 we've got here with this guy? Um, first we're out of time, mate. We're out of time. Give me one final thought. Your favorite deal. I assume it's Trevor Rogers, but your favorite deal at the deadline. It's gotta be Connor Norby. I've been watching this kid as an as a yep. secondary Orioles fan, watching him down south. He came up, saw him live, hit a monster mammoth home run. Not really a mammoth, but a nice home run at Lone Depot Park. <laughs> and yep. uh he's gonna be good. And okay. that, that's probably you got you when you win a trade like that. Like, and I'm, you can say what you want about prospects, but when you want to trade like that and with him, it's it's going to be a, a, a bright future for us in the near, more near future than we thought, yeah. hopefully. I'm getting the sense that you really like uh, Norby. So he's your guy now, I get that. So, and this is it. I've lost my guy. I've lost Jazz as well. Like he was my, you know, you get excited for the at-bats, right? You, you know, or a play from Jazz. I need to find my next, you know, my next jazz. When I when I started following the Marlins, the reason I followed them was because Giancarlo Stanton excited me. He drew me yeah. into the Marlins. They then traded him. I'm like, okay, I'm going to attach myself to Lewis Brinson. Boy, oh boy, that was a that was a drop off there, no doubt. But and then Jazz comes along. Okay, Jazz is the next guy. So I need that in my fandom. I need a player to root for at all times and just be their like biggest fan. So I'm gonna I need to find that guy. I th I think we could both agree. I have three guys right now. One of them is X, and that guy's good, and that guy's going to yeah. be good. So for yeah. a while, I'm happy to have him. Connor Norby, and of course, when Dane Myers gets healthy, he's another guy. So we, our yeah. future's bright. There's your call, mate. Love to love to see it. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Appreciate you making Lockdown Marlins your first listen. Thanks to the Loud Marlins fan for dropping in, giving his views, thoughts on the, the activity at the deadline. Thanks for you guys for making Lockdown Marlins your first listen. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we preview a four-game series with the Atlanta Braves. Very interesting series for the Marlins. Very, very interesting series for the Bravos. And there's going to be an old friend returning back to both, well, turning back to the Braves, but impacts both organizations. So looking forward to seeing Jorge Soler. Lace it up for the Bravos. We'll see you tomorrow.